You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show match report episode. I'm Mark Wiltshire. Today, I'm joined by Rich Nelson. Hi, Rich. Hey. And by Ali Manson. Hi, Ali. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about Finland 1, Romania 1. This is match day five in the 2022-23 Nations League, kind of group stage of the competition. And I was at the game in the Olympia Stadion, in the Pocky Oiscarre with all the other lunatics. And it's an amazing place to experience a game of football. And it's not necessarily the best place to watch and remember a game of football. <laughs> so luckily I've got Rich and Ali here with me to, uh, to give their insights from their, from their sofas. Um, that said, I did just watch the highlights uh, with Satu and I said, oh, I do remember all those things. Um, so there wasn't anything that I'd really missed, but it was just hadn't embedded itself in my, in my mind. Um, Rich, maybe you can start by just talking a little bit about the the team that was selected by uh, Marku Kaneva for the uh, for the kickoff of the game. Um, yeah, so uh, as per usual, we had the the five three two or three five two formation. Um, even off uh, Weissman and um, had Richard, uh, Jensen. Richard Jensen played uh, Alho as well and at the back <laughs> and and we had. Um, that kind of scenario where Daniel O'Shaughnessy was still injured. We're still working out with Yara Uren and a left back, a left wing back. We're still trying to work out how these pieces all fit together. I think after, after a couple of years, especially at wing back, um, Alho played there, um, a converted winger is very promising in his Hoyipo days. And in midfield, had Glenn Kamara, Rasmus Schuller, Oni Valakari was freed after the Twitter campaign of hashtag free Oni. And uh, and he went up front with um, uh, Temo Pulki and Frederick Jensen. So it's nice to have brothers in the Finland team. I think this, you know, we've, got, we've had a couple of sets over the last sort of decade, fifteen years or so with uh, Eremenko and, and Weissman. But um, it was tell, uh, tell, just that, talk a little bit about this campaign to free Oni because this passed me by. Um, yeah, basically, um, over the last sort of year, eighteen months, I think Valakari has been in in squads and he's not really had many minutes he's kind of in that position where you'd imagine that Robin Lord would be the kind of main attacking midfield option there but also Robert Taylor has, has played there as well so Valakar hasn't really earned that many minutes in the squad over the last year to 18 months so he actually started the game um, with, with Taylor injured and, and Lord injured as well and uh I was surprised, I guess, a slightly different player, but uh, Lucas Lingman, after his excellent form, um, didn't start. He did come on in the second half and, and played well. He played but, well in um, the summer summer fixtures as well, didn't he? Fourth yeah, he did. Yeah, I think it was against Bosnia. He, he looked really impressive. And, um, and yeah, and, and Frederick Jensen was preferred up front. And I think we saw in the reverse of this fixture at Romania in, earlier in the year, um, we we haven't really seen the best of Pukki and Poy and Palo play well together. Um, they they play well uh, with others or individually, but the two of them, and particularly Poy and Palo, was cr- cutting Pukki off a lot. I think they were kind of occupying too small a space in the pitch. And I wonder if uh, with Jensen starting the season fairly well in Germany, he he was preferred up front um, instead of Yole. So so that was the starting eleven, and um, and I think we'll we'll have to see some or well, at least one change will be enforced. For, uh, for Monday night's game. But um, the first half, Finland did okay. I think there was an element of... Uh, Rasmus Schuller played really, really well. Um, his partnership with Glenn Kamara is, is doing well as well. I know we were talking off air that Kamara didn't get the, the higher rating that perhaps we thought he might have deserved, not that it really matters beyond the 90 minutes on the pitch. But um, I mean, Schuller, Schuller was excellent, absolutely fantastic. And, and he's, he got an injury towards the end of the game and he's going to miss the Montenegro match on Monday, which is a big shame because uh, the performances he's put in uh, since he's been the regular have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I I was, I mean, it was foot mob or foot mob that, that gave the the rankings, and um, Glenn Kamara got uh, six point nine, and an orange little 
bubble by his name and Valakari got 6.9 and a green one so I'm not quite sure why why one 6.9 ranking seems to be worse than another but um, the point of it was from from my vantage point um, what he was doing really stood out and I mean we've been saying this for years now about him winning the ball carrying the ball and, and and passing the ball bringing bringing his teammates in and it, it was quite early in the game, Ali, that, that it was his drive that led to the first goal of the game. Yeah, it was a really good run from him into the box because, I mean, he probably doesn't score as, as many goals as he uh, would like. And I'm sure Rangers fans and we would definitely agree uh, on that. But he made a really good run into the box. Um, it was a really good ball from the left. Uh, his cross was cut out by a... a, a rem- Romanian defender, I can't remember who, and then I believe it fell to um, uh, to uh, Balakari, uh, and then an excellent first. Um, well, yeah, he didn't even take a touch, did he? He just uh, let the ball sort of come across him. Puki gave it a good old whack, and it went into the corner. And that's a really difficult technique to do when the ball's coming across you uh, to cut again across the ball back the other way. Um, it was a really, really good hit. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, at that point, Mark, in the stadium, everyone was like, right, we're, we're on to something here. It's going to be a, a, a good night for us. Yeah, it, it was it was jubilant. We all had flags to wave before the game and they, they were they were littering the, the, the <laughs> very li- there's very limited space in the Olympia Stadium because it's a seated arena. But everyone in our area is standing and you've got a really narrow I reckon if you've got a sort of size 12 feet or above, you're going to be struggling standing in that in that space. And and yeah, the atmosphere was was really good. Um, what what I what I saw in the in the replay of the of the goal was that that Valakari got the ball on the edge of the box, like you said, and and sort of lo- seemed to be lining up to shoot. And then there was this wall of like four or five remaining defenders closing him down, and he just laid it to the side. And you're right, it, it wasn't a fast pass to Bulky, but because it was coming across him, that gave him all the power and striking against it and drilled it, drilled it home. Um, yeah, I think we were feeling we were feeling optimistic, but it didn't quite continue, Rich. No, um, I mean, they, they got, I think, getting to half time at 1 0. And bear in mind, we, we talked last week that uh, Romania is something of a bogey team for Finland. They've never actually beaten Romania. And um, and especially after the performance in the, the away match in June, there was a bit of disappointment. I think uh, Romania hadn't got any points at that stage and, and that was their first win. And I think there was a bit of optimism there going into that. The players were doing pretty well. Romania hadn't really tested them. I think mean, it's safe to say, I mean, the, the balance of the play was good. And that, and that, that control that, that they had in midfield between Schuller and Kamara was really looking impressive. I don't know what was said at half time. But what came out of the dressing room in the Finland side in the second half was one of the worst periods of play I've seen from Finland for that sort of 10 or 15 minutes. I, I think it started just before time. halftime, Rich, actually. Again, looking mm. at the highlights, there were a few chances in the, the 10 or 12 minutes before halftime, and it seemed to carry on into the second half. Yeah, I mean, R- Romania did hit the post um, mm. after about half an hour, but I think... You- and, and Rudetsky saved it onto the post, I think. I mm. don't know how much he really knew of it because he sort of shoveled it onto the post. But a save is a save. It's one for the stats. Um, but yeah, I think definitely, particularly after half time, it was a more of a, it, it was more glaring at how there'd been a drop off in focus performance. Um, yeah. And then I guess Romania were probably due their equaliser after that start to the second half. Yeah, it was difficult when you saw that uh, and the, the way that Romania got that goal, it came down the, the finish right side where the, the ball went behind Alho at right back and Oni Valakari was the player tracking the run. And I mean, Valakari's a great player at what he does. But tracking runners into his own box isn't really his natural game. His, his strengths are going forward. Um, whether that would have been different if it was anyone else or just the way the team was set up, but it just seemed a little bit, too easy uh, that the way that that happened and when you see it on the replays you just kind of see that half second where that bit of focus wasn't there and 
and and it's just it looked simple it was a shame really because um you know that after getting that lead and really that that quality dropping off dropping off then the second half they just weren't at the races at all until that goal and it took a good conceding a goal to to really start shaking them out of it even though that didn't come to later on yeah i i, I put a note next to their equalizer about you know the fact that you know could alho have done a little bit better and i put a question mark next to it but hearing you speak now rich i don't think i need the question mark i think it can just be a i think it can just be a, a sentence because it, it did look quite easy how romania cut through that right hand side of the defense which I guess maybe highlights what you were saying earlier about the issues of our wing backs at the moment, not quite fully fulfilling both in an offensive point of view and defensive. Because if you're going to play 5-3-2, 3-5-2, 3-4-3, whatever it is with the wing backs, they're so important in that sort of system. And yeah, I think Friday night sort of highlighted that we're not quite there yet. I think... We, we've seen obviously the retirement of, of Yuka Raitala, who's more of a right sided defender. And Alho, as we said before, is a, is a, a winger who's been converted. We've seen Purosori play well for Hoiko. He's got back into the squad, the national team, and he's he's playing well. And he was playing at right back, for quite a right wing back. Um, they were trialing him ahead of Euro 2020 last year. And this just seems to be one of the things where I don't know if. They're so wedded to the system now where, you know, before in qualifying for the last Euros, everything was a rigid four at the back, four at the back, everything worked. And then you start changing the roles in the team and playing with so many different players. You've got players like Hammerlinen who can't really get in, in the position, uh, Raitala, Soiri, Alho, and trying to get that balance right with... Uh, do you have a natural defender who is expected to go forward or do you have a winger who tracks back and trying to get that that blend right because it's happening far too often that Finland are fairly solid with the three in the middle and with the emergence of Ivanov and, and Weissenden and in this case Jensen as, as the third centre back but they look the partnerships there look pretty good and it's the same throughout the spine of the team but it's down the wings that there is just that constant weakness and it seems to be, even to my sort of amateur eyes, it's quite easy to telegraph. If you're scouting Finland, get down the wings, get in that gap behind the wing back and between the centre and, and to the side of the centre halves. You've got a lot of room to play with. And again, it was just easy. I think it was later in the game that, that Finland had quite a few good opportunities to get that winner, but then so did. Romania, the game got the game got a bit stretched, and while each team was attacking, they were they were also sort of leaving leaving themselves vulnerable to a counter attack and two perhaps glaring glaring chances for for Finland that that were wasted. Ali, yeah, I, I think, I mean, again in, in my notes, I put you know, did Finland create enough? Question mark, and I, I think they did in the end. Um, I think was it was it Kilman mm -hmm. at the end of the eight, eight quite late on. I mean, he does so well to cut back on his left, cut back again on his right, and it was a a really good effort. But then there's an angle that they showed on the replay where it's from behind him and it makes the goal look massive, and then you just go, oh, that really could have. He, he just sort of cut across it too much, yeah, yeah. put too much spin on it, and you know I'm not really taking away anything from his you know build up play to that because it was a great run i initially thought it could have been offside but i think the goal would have stood um if it had gone in um but yeah it's just those those fine margins in you know group b and this sort of standard of international football when there isn't a huge amount between some of the teams i mean I would still say that Finland have more about them than Romania, but as I think Rich mentioned earlier, we've never beaten them. <laughs> so, um, you know, having that confidence of being the better team can only stretch so far in that respect. And there yeah, was still one more Chal chance. Yeah, well, that, that's part of it. Chalman's clearly been watching videos of the original Ronaldo in his pomp at Barcelona, the way 
sort of burst in there. But um, yeah, there was another one, I think it might have been in injury time, I think, or maybe mm. 89th minute. And um, the, the ball came across and, and Khan Kairanen, who'd come on as a, as a late sub, I think he may have come on for, for Shula. Um, he got a tiny touch that took the ball away from Boyan Palo in front of the goal. And I'm not saying this, you know, Boyan Palo would have buried it, but there was that touch that disrupted his movement and he was out of balance and, and he was right in front of the goal about 10, 10 yards out or so. And it was just one of those that you kind of feel like, oh, it's just not their day. Yeah, I mean, it, it was right in front of the goal. Uh, coming to Bokin Palo, it would have been another perfect opportunity for him to come off the subs bench and score, mm. you know, to score another important goal, which he did at the end of last season for his for his club side. Um, and he was screaming at the gods at the opportunity being being taken away from him. But that was that was basically where it ended with with Finland one, Romania one, which leaves the league table looking well, actually quite. Quite interesting, surprisingly interesting. So Bosnia Herzegovina are top uh, with eleven points. They've basically won that won that group. Now they'll be in League A next season. Um, then Montenegro are second with seven points. Finland third with five, and Romania uh, with four. Um, Montenegro are probably safe, although if they lose four 0 to Romania. Uh, oh no, sorry. They, you know, we, we're playing them on Monday, so Romania need to need to beat Bosnia Herzegovina by a lot of goals, and for Finland to beat Montenegro for anything to happen to to Montenegro. So they're basically safe. Um, but if we win, we would have eight points. Montenegro would have seven, and Romania on four. Um, so from a from a from a, a round of get or a, a group of games that have been a bit meh. We could still finish second, and we all know that that these things are important for potential wildcard qualifications and uh, coefficients, rich and all that, all that good stuff. Yeah, I think when when you look at now, Bosnia have have won the group. So if they, I think it's if they qualify outright for Euro twenty twenty four, then that playoff place drops to the team that goes second, uh, that finish second in this group. So they're still. Um, a lot to play for there. Mm. Obviously, there's um, the, the spectre of relegation hanging over the team that comes bottom. And you bear in mind, Romania's points have all come against Finland. <laughs> but um, and um, and of course, if, if you stay in Group B or League B, sorry, um, you may well end up playing for England next time round. Yeah, got quite, games, so. quite right. Yeah, so there's six points there for us potentially. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've lamented <laughs> the fact that England haven't played Finland since uh, 2001. So it'd be nice if I mean it'd be nice in a proper qualifier, but yeah, Nations League would be nice. But um, but yeah, so Finland could come anywhere between second and fourth. Um, yeah. I, I can't. The, uh, it's more a case I think that I don't see Romania getting uh, more than a draw mm. off Bosnia. Um, Bosnia have qualified and can do whatever they want. Um, and I think now with Finland, it's it's difficult when you go to Montenegro. Uh, Montenegro in the home game in June were appalling and didn't turn up at all. Um, and that was a point in Palo got two, two first half goals. But I think this now, they've got their seven points. They, they can afford to be a little bit more pragmatic. Uh, Finland are missing Rasmus Schuller, which is going to be a huge loss. Although I expect Lingman to come in for him. Mm-hmm. And then I can't see Valakari keeping his start in place now. Who, who'll come in for him? I don't know. Um, whether it'll be Kyron and, or, or something. But... Um, There'll have to be a couple of changes, but I think um, I think fin- Finland should be safe in the group, but more more because I think I can't see Romania getting more than more than a draw, and, and Finland just need to better their result. Yeah, I mean, just going back to that June game, <clears throat> Montenegro really were appalling. Rich. So I'm sort of looking at that table, and I, I go, how have they managed to get seven points out of this group? Um, but it's now down to it's now down to Finland to go there tomorrow and and get the result and prove that they're they're the better team because I tr- truly feel that they are um and Mark I just had a question for you what was the what was the mood like at, at full time because obviously we know what the atmosphere was like pre-match um you know it's you know fantastic but I was just thinking you know that 1-1 draw you know could have maybe lost the game what was the the mood in the stadium at full time 
I, I don't know if the if the mood in the Bokeh Scarre is necessarily a good barometer for how the rest of the <laughs> rest of the ground is feeling, because there was a there was a really there was that normal positive re- interaction between the the fans and the and the team. The team came over. There was the there was the same kind of recognition and and sort of singing to the team and the team. I, I, I was feeling a bit flat and disappointed. I'm sure people were, but it wasn't. There was no booing. There was nothing sort of negative being being said, really. So, I, I think the fans are are still behind the team and uh, and Keke and his lot and the the others from Asamiko that are out there in Montenegro will be behind the team, a hundred percent still on on Monday. So I think it was kind of business as usual from a from a sort of getting behind your team point of view, and. I guess, unless there's anything else from you, Rich, I, I guess that kind of wraps things up. Um, no, I think, um, again, this is where probably Finland's level really is. I think they mm. they, they coasted through that League C campaign, the, the First Nations League, and, and and it took them to great places. And I think now we, we, we talked about from the start of the, when the draw was made, this group really was, I think any team in there could have finished positions one to four, uh, we're now in the final day where Finland could still finish anywhere from two to four at least, and um, and and it's difficult to see. I think there's there's some there's been good performances on Friday, and and again, you know, I know KK talks a lot about it, but I think missing Schuller is going to be a big thing, and hopefully, um, if if they can get a goal, Finland can get an early goal that seems to to settle the nerves anyway, although on Friday that seemed to do almost the opposite. It seemed to kind of relax them a bit too much. But I think uh, an early goal and, and just try, you know, hopefully it's one of those more upbeat performances and not one where it gets a little bit frustrating if, if people are struggling. Because you do see in, in the team sometimes, you know, especially we we'll talk about Poy and Palo doing it, that the arms go up in the air, that whole Ronaldo kind of frustration thing, which it, it does, you know, it's visible and people can see that frustration. So hopefully, Come uh, come Monday evening, you know, by the end of it, it the main thing is that Finland don't get relegated. But um, that to come out of it with, you know, a good performance, a win would be nice. But a good performance and and maybe you know one or two players maybe showing that they deserve a, a run in the team if if they're stepping in for an injured injured colleague. Let's see what happens on Monday night then. Um, Rich, thanks for joining today. Hey, hey, Ali, good to see you again. Thanks for joining. It does. Hey, hey. We will be back sometime shortly after the Montenegro Finland game with whichever permutation of <laughs> of a co-host is available. So listener, keep your ears open for that one. Thanks for listening. And until the next episode of the show, goodbye. You have been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter at Explore Finland, at FC Sormi, at Escape to Sormi, at Kekimula. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.